Thank you, everyone. Um, for the sake of time, I had prepared some um, slides, but we're trying to catch up on time. So I'm going to really shorten what I'm going to say today. Um, we've had a very, very, very busy financial year. And I always find this at the end of the financial year, you think, oh, we did this, we did that. But when you go through all the things we did, we did quite a lot. So if you get a chance in your little goodie bag, you'll see the annual director's report. And in that's got all the information, a lot more detail about the different activities and events that have happened over the last 12 months, including also um, some fundraising that we've done. Um, we also did some patient videos um, at the February retreat. We held a, a second February retreat in Echuca. And while we were there, we got a video team to come out and do some videos of people living with Fabry disease, asking them questions related to Fabry and um, what they find is supportive from the, the Fabry Australian organisation. So we're just gonna do a, a quick show of that video and then um, I'll probably hand it over to Sheridan to do the AGM, okay? While they're getting the videos going, maybe I will refer to the annual director's report. Um, as many of you probably know, we have got a great committee that are all volunteers. There, there's nine volunteers that sit on the committee and we meet up by teleconference throughout the year and we get really excited when we get together once a year. Okay, we are losing screens now. <laughs> um, and Anne and I are working in the office part time. So you'll, you'll see all that within the, the report. Um, as I said, we had the, the February retreat, it's, and we've had it twice now. The other thing that happened in the last 12 months, um, we managed to do some fundraising. Um, my, my cousin, Reese, who was, um, his father was diagnosed when he was actually only 22. Um, that's Reese was 22, he's a, he's a twin. Um, yeah, he wanted to raise some money for Fabry disease, so he, he decided to do a solo um, challenge uh, to ride to ride solo on his bike from Pakenham, Victoria, up to New South Wales, and did it in under a week. And he raised eleven thousand dollars, which was fantastic. Yeah. So we're very proud of the people that do fundraising for Fabry Australia, and they're trying to contribute that to research. And the, the other highlight we've had in the last um, 12 months, and we'll redo it again next year, is the Be Rare, Be You tattoos. And I know you heard about that this morning with Sheridan. Um, so please, if you haven't done so, get your Be Rare, Be You tattoo and take some photos and get behind it for next year as well. It's going to roll it out again for Rare Disease Day and for February Awareness Month, which is in April. Uh, that's probably the major highlights of activities that we did throughout the year. I was hoping my rambling might have got us through to the video, but it's not working. Um, if we can't get the video up and running, I might actually hand over to Sheridan and we'll do the AGM. Oh, yeah, so the Life Saving Drugs Program with you, you probably heard a little bit about it. You would have seen some information about it. So the, the program that funds the treatments, the enzyme replacement therapies and the Galafold, the actual, actual program itself is under review. Um, and thank you to the people that have completed surveys and the surveys have been um, put forward for consideration as part of the patient perspective of the review. And we've also had teleconferences around that and interviews as, as well, given the patient perspective. We are expecting a report in November and we'll be very interested to see what's within that report, what are the key recommendations, and to see from that um, where to from here with the Life Saving Drugs Program. So when I hear more about that, I'll, I'll let you know. I just wanted to add further to that, the LSDP review, thanks again, as Megan re said, I'd reiterate that it's really great that those of you that participated and gave you feedback, but just wanted to express that everyone's voice is important. So, you know, if you're sitting back, um, not quite sure how to contribute, when we do reach out to you, we really truly do appreciate when you do take the time to respond to surveys or join a conference call, because the patient voice is essential. Um, 
we can advocate so far, but we need those combined stories to really help us push the government forward and advocate, okay? Um, so thanks again, but yeah, we'll probably be calling out again at the future, no doubt. So um, we'd really love you to step forward and tell your stories and express how treatment does affect, you know, improve your lives. That's really what we need to emphasise. Um, and there was something else that I thought might be worth mentioning. Um, and yesterday, yesterday we did do some work on our strategy planning. I was very oh, when my dad was diagnosed 25 years ago. Um, I don't think I really formally understood I had it until probably 10 or more years ago. I was diagnosed um, as my dad found out he had Fabris, so my brother and um, had tests and I found out I had Fabri and my brother found out he didn't. <laughs> we were diagnosed last year, a year ago, so um, it started with Tara, her regular ophthalmologist appointment, her yearly appointment. The ophthalmologist spotted the vortex pattern in her eyes um, and just gave me a call and then I recalled my optometrist had seen that pattern in mine and my mum's eyes about 20 years ago. Uh, so then we went on for testing and diagnosed, uh, came back positive. Yeah. I knew nothing about it, so I was actually quite shocked because it was a, a disease that there was no cure for. So. Um, I didn't know where to turn to, to ask the questions that I, that I had running around in my mind. I didn't really think about the concerns for my own health because I was in my early 30s. I was relatively healthy as far as I could see. Um, it was more for my children. Concerns about my future health and things like your working capacity and things like that and how it will affect you. Um, as a mother, you worry about your future children. Fabry's disease affects me by tiredness. Um, sometimes they can get really lethargic, but I'm just one of those people who pushes on. Um, I don't let it get me down. And I'm aware of my levels of fatigue, so if I get too tired, I, I know what to do. So it doesn't affect me greatly. With Monica, um, she has treatment, so I take her to the hospital fortnightly. For many years I didn't worry much at all about it. Um, I've been on um, Fabry infusions now for quite a few years uh, and I'm starting to think about it much more in the more recent years. Fabry Australia it's a wonderful support network and it's a great um, group of people to be involved with. What they do for me is give me another family, um, a family that understands what I go through, a family that um, supports me. Um, I find out things that I think are unusual are completely normal within this family. For me, I find it's the mutual support, it's checking in with other people, it's also fantastic in terms of we can work as a team to advocate, to have a voice. feel positive about my future. I think the advances that are coming along in medical research will make our future a lot brighter than it, what it was when, say, I was first diagnosed. I'm just hopeful that I stay healthy and fit as I do today. I'm more hopeful than I was. There's all these new treatments coming out. There's tablets being made instead of having infusions. It's fantastic being so well looked after. Uh, that's what I'm grateful for, being um, closely monitored by professional doctors. Here in Australia we have some of the best doctors and the most knowledgeable doctors on Fabry disease. We also have a government that um, supports uh, this disease you know, with funding. Life. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for the fact that I have beautiful family, friends, um, both uh, biologically and Fabry related.
Thank you to all those people that contributed to that film. Um, so that was filmed at the last February retreat. And if you've never been to a February retreat before, we are planning one for next year. We hope to take it to Queensland. So those members that are living in Queensland, yay, we're coming to you. Um, we, this, this is the challenge we have. We're a big country. There are 310 patients across all the clinics. There are five adult clinics across the country and paediatric clinics. A big challenge is trying to meet the needs of everybody at all those clinics. And only a third of those patients are on any formal treatment. So there are a lot of people out there that aren't on any formal treatment um, that perhaps may need it, perhaps may not need it, perhaps other, have other family members that have got the disease, don't have, haven't had any testing. They may have been tested, but they haven't come to anything at the group. So if you've got people that are in your family that you know would enjoy perhaps not coming to a conference like this, but would enjoy coming to something like the Fabry Retreat, we have a really lovely time. We do things like yoga, tai chi, um, we did a drumming um, exercise where everyone had a lot of fun. We, we just learned to enjoy each other's company. But also whilst we're together, we have lots of incidental conversations about what it's like living with Fabry. We're not a moan and groan group, I wouldn't say. Um, we learn to just get on with it, but it's good to check in with others that have got the same condition. So it is, like Lee said, it's like another family. Um, so I really encourage you, if you haven't come before, to come to the February retreat next year. <coughs> Stay tuned, details will be coming.